All right. We are here today with Linda Jacobson. We are, you guys heard the intro before we hopped on here. We're going to drive, dive, of course, as usual, straight into her two truths and a lie. Linda, thank you so much for joining us and hopping on here. I'm so excited to talk to you and pick your brain about your travels. But first, spill us the two truths and a lie. Uh, first, just uh, super happy to be here. This is my first podcast. Uh, very excited. We are so, stoked to have you. Uh, truths uh, or a lie. Uh, yeah. Okay, number one then. Uh, I stole the KOM from the longest segment on Col de Piton from the legend Emma Pooley uh, during my trip this year. Um, number two, uh, during labor, I had my Garmin watch on and this very watch I'm wearing right now, uh, oh. it sent me messages. Uh, and the most like helpful one uh, was, uh, your body is in, in more stress than normal. Try a relaxing exercise. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, it was just a funny, uh, funny story to this um, giving birth uh, experience. That is funny. Uh, uh, number three, uh, me and Marcus, we have been a couple for about uh, nine years, uh, married uh, for one. Uh, it still says Marcus is single on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good one. Um, oh my goodness. All of these sound very possibly true. Um, and I have heard funny things about the Garmin, like talking to people, like making them either feel like not great about what's going on or, um, you know, not really stoking them up. I, I, I kind of, but I also know you're such a like badass on the bike. I feel like number one could be true. Oh man, this one's hard. Um, I guess I'll go with the Facebook one. Well, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll guess that that's maybe like there's some number, like maybe it wasn't nine years married. Maybe it's like, or known each other or been a couple for nine years. Maybe it's a little bit less, but we will reveal the answer at the end for our listeners. And if any of these are true, we'll maybe we'll get some more story out of um, Linda mm -hmm. on those through this episode today. So let's kind of go back a ways. Where did you grow up? What was your upbringing like? What, um, what got you into cycling? So uh, my home country is Sweden. Uh, I was born and raised in a smaller city in the very south of Sweden. So it's basically, we don't have any proper winters anymore, at least um, at least not for like 20 plus years. Uh, wow. And uh, it, I think uh, sometimes when you mention Sweden, when you're out of country, people always assume it's a lot of, uh, you know, snowing activities, uh, skiing, etc. But that's pretty, you have to go pretty far north mm. to, to be able to do that. So the south is more like northern Germany or Denmark. Um, lots of rain, lots of wind, but it's also nice uh, sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, I got into cycling through my father because he started um, in his mid forties to, um, I don't know if it was a crisis or not, <laughs> a semi-crisis, but he had to find something uh, that he found uh, some purpose for, or just uh, uh, try something new. So he, he tried out cycling and uh, cycling in Sweden for, like for exercise and for sportive events, it's very, very big. But mm -hmm. the racing scene is pretty small. So we have a big like sportive event that uh, have, I don't, I'm not sure about the number, but like 20,000 participants each wow. year. So that's the biggest, like if you, if you cycle in Sweden, this is the number one question. Have you done this uh, sportive? Wow. Um, so pretty soon after, uh, me and my younger brother, we joined him on his rides and we found out it was uh, a local club in our hometown. And it's a small town, it's like 5,000 inhabitants of that town. Wow. Um, and luckily enough, I was uh, just got into that group of uh, people there. I was 15 and at the time we were four 
girls aged 15, 16. Wow. So we had a really fun, uh, it was a huge booster for me to uh, actually stay in the sport because it is a hard sport to start with because you have to make an effort to be um, to be somewhat good. Everybody, unless you have done a lot of like endurance sport before, it takes a while until you are comfortable with the bike and somewhat getting up like your endurance capacity. So, yeah. and for a few years there, we were like a hundred percent cycling uh, family uh, racing every every other weekend uh, wow. from April to September super serious uh, you know uh, and uh, when I was in the junior category like age 17 18 mm -hmm. uh, then I started to get better and better for real and uh, I was uh, selected for the national team and uh, raced a lot and I did a junior world championship once as well oh, wow that's great um, so uh, but then uh, when I after those years in the junior category um, you go to elite category and mm -hmm. in Sweden it's so it's the racing scene is pretty small so it's either elite category right away or the more like sportive mm -hmm. um so it was. It's not really an option to go on the like sportive side if you are a racing, mm. a firing bike racer, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and early that year, I met Marcus, my who is now my husband, and I was only nineteen at the time, and wow. he he is uh, twelve years older than me. And mm. at the time, the this was the big. Uh, it was the big scandal in the small cycling world. <laughs> People talking this and that, blah, blah, you know? Yeah. Uh, that we started dating, whatever. Um, so it's like the first year was kind of, ah, touch and go. Will this be, mm. is this going to be something? Or is it just, um, you know, things that happen, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm hmm it was he was cycling uh, as well yeah yeah so he has been cycling all his life uh, wow. racing as well um but never uh never fully like uh, professional mm -hmm. uh, within sweden he has been very good and uh, also in denmark in some uci races as well but not wow. a aiming to become a professional mm -hmm. um, so but then when we uh, had dated for like a year and a half we were kind of at the roadblock he he got um his team was um the sponsor was not going to sponsor anymore and uh we were not sure what to do next you know? mm -hmm. so we uh, decided to go on a big bike tour trip uh, to California for three months. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So he has he he had done one bike tour before in his life, so he know what this is. But this yeah. is completely new to me, and I feel like I have a feeling uh, at the back of my head or in my stomach like this is this person is right for me. So I have to do this trip. Oh, it's right. It's right or die. If if this works out, this is the person I will yes. live with. If this is not, if, if if it doesn't work out, then I know for sure. Like, eventually, it wouldn't have worked out anyway. So, yeah, I took That's this great. chance and 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 went on this trip. Um, and I uh, I really like the first night uh was kind of you know scary because california is not like uh it's not like sweden it's not like europe yeah like, uh, for us we are used to you can go out at any any forest any land mm. and it's a public land it's allowed by law to camp anywhere oh it's not, yeah. it's, not it's not the same uh, at least you have to be at the at the campsite or right uh, somewhere where it's allowed so we couldn't really found find a good place to stay mm. but 
after this like first night of uh, mm, sketchiness, I really enjoyed it, <laughs> and uh, it made us like uh, an item. Oh, so where where in um, California did you guys start and kind of end at? So we took a flight to Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and um, we rode up to uh, San Francisco. And then to Yosemite National Park for wow. stay there for a few days. Um, kind of, we went inland mm-hmm. uh, south. I think the town is called Bakersfield. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like it, this flat area. Mm-hmm. We got to Bakersfield, and it was the we took a bus to uh, San Diego and spent uh, about two weeks in. Uh, Encinitas, Carlsbad area. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um, we had some friends living there, so it was a it was a mixed trip with both bike packing and also just uh, chilling in Encinitas. Yeah, that's awesome. So, did you guys ship your bikes over to California and then? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Amazing! Wow. wow. So, what year was this? This was twenty fifteen. Okay. Oh wow! Yeah. Good for you guys. This that's this sounds like an amazing trip. So this is for three months in California. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. So what was your overall aside from the camping situation? Mm-hmm. What was your overall like perception think, of California? I, <laughs> like uh, for sure, I uh, I really love the American style of everybody we met are so super friendly so right. generous so they they ask us about things they're super like um how, what is the word like um, like inquisitive uh, or yeah yeah it, it feels like you are you become friends like very fast oh, nice. you connect with people very fast yeah. maybe, maybe not on a deeper level but at mm. least uh, when you meet people, chat along the way. Yeah, uh, you meet people at the campsite. Uh, everybody is so super positive, and oh, mostly okay. people also say nice things about Scandinavia. Oh, Scandinavia is this, Scandinavia is that. You, it's you get the feeling it has a good reputation, or at least uh, yeah, at, uh, at least it did back mm-hmm. then. So, um, uh, and the nature, like. The nature is really amazing and it changes quite fast. Like mm-hmm. the, the area of Yosemite is super special, but then you get uh, further south and pretty fast it changes to yeah. a different kind of spectacular. So, right. Uh, yeah. The terrain changes like with the peaks right. and yeah, yeah, that is interesting. What did you, out of curiosity with the cycling, like, and you're primarily road cycling, correct? No, not mm-hmm. gravel. Mm-hmm. What is the biking scene and car respect it like in Sweden versus what you experienced in California? Uh, to me, California is a lot better in general. As really? Even, yeah, because mostly even the smaller roads in California or in the U.S. in general, mm-hmm. they are pretty big and they have a, a pretty solid shoulder. Mm. So if you uh, if you cycle by yourself or just a smaller group, mm-hmm. like the majority of your group or uh, you and your bike, you can go on the shoulder and you're mm-hmm. not in the way of traffic. So mm. I, I haven't really experienced any touch and go situation there. That's uh, good. In Europe in general, it's like if you're not going up a mountain mm-hmm. where, where, where people are uh focused on driving mm-hmm. if you go on a road where people come you to work or mm. uh, just uh, a straight road there is no shoulder people especially now they're on their phones it's super dangerous yeah or could it, it could be super dangerous and mm-hmm. then uh, the shoulders are not big so it depends like going up mountains no problem but like everyday cycling around cities could be pretty dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. That is interesting. I've like, we, I know there's a lot of proponents out here to like further increase cycling safety out here. Um, 
in certain areas and, and just get more people on, on bikes in general. But yeah, I was curious. I, I, I was like under the impression that, and I have not been to Europe, I will preface with that. <laughs> um, but I was under the impression that cycling, I will, I will say I've had a couple of, of clients who have done cycling trips in Majorca and they said the biking there was very friendly and the cars gave them plenty of space and if they felt very safe, right. but I don't yeah. know how that compares to. Well, you know. Spain is uh, so far in Europe, Spain is my favorite country when it comes to uh, traffic because oh, yeah. they are, they have this law, they have to be at least 1.5 meters oh, okay. to, to, to circle you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Spain is a very common destination for bikers. So they are uh, keen to keep the cycling scene safe right. because this affects so much with their economy and tourism. So it is a big uh, win for them to treat cyclists good. Yeah, um, wow. That makes sense. And, some, and, and in, in Europe, uh, especially in Scandinavia for like, when you go to work, it's a lot common. Uh, every other person take the bike to work and they mm -hmm. go on the bike path. So for commuting, this is very safe. It's only a yeah. bike path. But if you use this bike path for exercise or for a foster uh, group to go, mm -hmm then it's dangerous for the other cyclists or right. for pedestrians. So it's like the uh, foster group ride exercise group of people that are getting somewhere in between because it, it could be dangerous for others to be on the bike path, but mm -hmm. it's dangerous in traffic as well. So, yeah, yeah. I know, I do believe we have the three foot or one and a half meter rule out mm -hmm. here as well, which I think, I don't know how many people follow that, but it should be, <laughs> that should be happening out here. And in, in California, I think the majority maybe of the United States, but for sure, California, I know it's, um, enforced, which is, which is great. Um, okay. I do want to get into and be mindful of your time mm -hmm. and get into your recent trip. So you just got back from what looked like on Instagram, a pretty epic, epic trip. And that's like, yeah, yeah. particularly what caught our eye. And we're like, we have to talk to Linda and get her on the podcast. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about what kind of got you inspired to do this trip. And then let's like, t let's talk about it. Like, how did you plan it out? Where did you start? Was it a loop? Like, I want to know all the things like it looked mm -hmm. amazing. So, uh, you could say that uh, after the bike trip in California, we did two big, big trips on the mm -hmm. bike as well. Okay. So we had, uh, we did one in 2017 and one in 2019. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we, we got into this, like, we need a big adventure every other year to be, yeah. to feel that we are in a good place in life to enjoy life even more mm -hmm. and not be stuck at home. Mm -hmm. So we just, we also wanted a family. So we decided to try to get pregnant and then we had Julia and um, uh, here we, you get a very generous like policy for childcare in Scandinavia. Wow. So basically you have a legal right to be off work for mm -hmm. 450 days. To wow. split however you'd like between mother and father you can do whatever um so uh mostly of these days are paid like by the state so you mm -hmm. can this is like for for the children to be be able to be with their parents for longer that's amazing um, yeah so we just had this idea when i was pregnant like we have to think about something to do this is our chance to do another adventure with this uh, days off what um, policy mm -hmm. so you can't use these days at the same time so one of us has to figure something out and I found uh, like uh, online studies for uh, uh, to become a web designer oh wow um, so and if you 
if you study later in life, so I'm 28 mm -hmm. and I have worked for many years, but if you study, uh, you can be off work and still keep your job and come back mm. when you need to. So um, this was only online. So I just, oh, this is perfect. I will take this. And now we can be off this year, do whatever we want. Wow. That's great. So then we just had to secure that somebody was renting our place to cover the cost here at home. Nice. Uh, and slowly we got we got into basically we scanned Airbnb mm -hmm. day and night for weeks. Just where can we find a good place to stay? Uh, this area we like this area, or just look what's available or on Airbnb. We find something. Oh, this is might be something kind of it was a process mm -hmm. uh, last uh, fall uh, and then we found nice places that we booked in advance to make sure we had a good price on airbnb you got like monthly discount have you used it any airbnb I have. Yeah. We, so interestingly, this is part of, part of the big reason too. I want to pick your brain. We are trying to plan a month long trip to Europe next year. Mm -hmm. And we were thinking about renting our place out on Airbnb while we're gone. Yeah. So um, we've never rented our place on Airbnb, but we have booked places when we've gone, when we've traveled. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, this is, this is helpful. I'm like, <laughs> keep, mm -hmm. keep telling me more. And so, sometimes you get, um, you get a monthly discount if you stay a whole month. So sometimes oh. it, it can be cheaper to stay one full month than mm -hmm. to book three weeks, for instance. Mm -hmm. So we're just checking all of this, uh, finding places that we think is, it's always a compromise. Like yeah. uh, one place didn't have a washing machine, so we had to go to the laundromat, but mm -hmm. it's just something one place didn't have solid wi-fi but whatever we we could go to the tourist office to to get better wi-fi so it's always something but if you compromise you will find good good solutions yeah that's neat and so did you have like an idea of where you like were you making it like a big loop uh of your travel or what were your kind of well, destinations well um a loop wasn't the idea at first but mm. one thing that I had in mind was that I I needed something solid and something concrete to focus on to get back in shape after pregnancy mm -hmm. uh, and back in 2020 we had applied to uh, do uh, a marathon in Bratislava this is the capital of Slovakia oh wow uh, and we had to cancel it uh, because of COVID. And mm -hmm. then I thought about this, like maybe I can give it one more try and do it this year instead. Um, nice. And uh, I just decided one day to another, I will do this. Uh, then I have something to focus on during during winter. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so this was the first stop, the marathon for me. Wow. Uh, and uh before, um, well, I'm actually skipping a park, which is not included with the bike or uh, uh, bike car traveling. We spent five weeks on Gran Canaria at first. Oh, wow. It was like a pre-trip pre training camp. I was training for my marathon. Uh, Marcus was uh, cycling and we were cycled together with Julia. And then we got back, uh, then we packed the car, went to uh, to do the marathon then. And I was kind of worried because I had planned to focus a lot on running mm -hmm. on Gran Canaria for five weeks, but cycling was just too much fun. So I was cycling every single day with Marcus and Julia. Uh, and then I was running as well. So I was feeling like, ooh, I, my running shape is not... It's not where I'd hoped for, mm. but I still, I hope I can reach my like uh, personal uh, best time. Mm -hmm. It still might be possible. I'm not sure. But uh, um, on the first 
uh, half I went pretty hard and just hoped to be have enough legs at the end to to do it and I beat my personal best with one minute so I got nice. 325 so I was super happy with this Yay. time yeah um that's great and then after this marathon I just took off the running shoes have not put them on again <laughs> here <laughs> just the bike shoes <laughs> yes so then uh in the hope for getting some like warm temperatures and sun we went to Croatia um but the weather was pretty cold and mm. it was a lot around uh like 15 degrees celsius i don't know i don't know what that is in fahrenheit but at least you needed long sleeves mm -hmm. to to go on a bike ride um but at least at the end of the day at least i could focus a lot more on studies mm -hmm. um, but we we cycled a lot there as well but not as much as we hoped for yeah um, but then uh in end of April and the whole month of May, uh, we spent in the Dolomites. This is one of our favorite oh, wow. places on earth. We have been there uh, many, many times. It's so super beautiful. Uh, it's a very intense, pretty small area, but the mm -hmm. mountains are super epic, breathtaking wow. views. Um, you can go for a loop. If you do a loop of... Um, uh 50 miles for instance mm -hmm. you can go on uh, several um very famous uh climbs wow. and see so much in just 50 miles wow that's awesome and so were you staying in like one airbnb like you're saying for a month and then riding from there in different mm -hmm. areas around right yeah and then we then we also had the car so we mm -hmm. could also sometimes take the car uh, one hour away to do a certain climb or or something else that is in the area nice um, and uh, the last week of this dolomites period uh, we um, got to meet up the like beeler cycling crew this is the clothing that our uh, our clothing sponsor nice. uh, so they have a different kind of marketing strategy where they instead of using like traditional marketing strategies they they have a lot of brand brand writers like me and marcus uh, mm -hmm. around europe and also in in canada and us um, cool. they have gatherings uh, or trips that they mm -hmm. pay for uh, we were uh, 13 people at this uh, uh, gathering you say so mm -hmm. they they we stayed at a very nice hotel we go on the bike every day and uh, everybody have uh, cameras and uh, car following us to take wow. uh, to create all the content for for their social media and mm -hmm. we get to get to know the other brand writers uh uh, this was super fun and that also they had a you know a sample of new kits etc um That's awesome and you and said this is a eco-friendly brand right mm -hmm. yes yes That's awesome. so it's a family business I think it was I can't remember when what year it was founded but uh, it's a family business based uh, in Germany uh we had the privilege to visit this headquarters and they have everything uh, at the same place wow. everything from design to manufacturing it is at the very same place in germany so and we could just on the upper level they make the designs you go down once there they have personnel sewing this up uh wow it's not um, manufactured in asia or far away it's mm. very uh it feels very good to represent this brand because it mm -hmm. felt so like real mm -hmm. and since it's so personal it's also like our group of brand writers who represent this brand we can also have an impact on the brand uh, 
uh, with feedback, uh, requests, whatever. They listen to us uh, to make make things better. So awesome. We have been with them for three years, so I'm super, super happy with this. Yeah. And if, if for our listeners, if you guys check out Linda's um, Instagram, you could see the cycling gear and also her and Marcus are matching a lot on there. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> I like that. That's cute. Um, so with the, the trip kind of overall, so you were gone for a, a year. Is that what I gathered? Uh, so uh, six months so far. Oh, wow. Uh, but um now we spend two months at home okay and then we we, uh to see family and Mm -hmm. uh, to have a break uh and hopefully in october november we have something else planned but it's not uh uh, it's not 100 percent what it is but it will be something Mm -hmm. so now it's just like two months of reload yes yeah do you go do you think you would go somewhere warm to keep cycling or Pro- probably uh, yeah. if we find good tickets to I'm open to anything uh, that is not too expensive yeah. as we are on a pretty low budget uh, in general uh, yeah oh, we'll awesome. see yeah you want to do a house swap in March next year <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah maybe yeah but, um, but then af- uh, after the Dolomites we spent uh, June in Switzerland and wow. Uh, July in France um, and lots of things happening uh, like Tour de Suisse, Tour de France, Mm -hmm. uh, lots of mounting iconic climbs. Wow. My parents, they joined us for uh, two weeks uh, traveling with us. My dad, he brought his bike as well. We did one big, we did a big sportive event um, Mm -hmm. in France. It's called La Marmotte Grand Fondo. Oh, yes. Um, have you heard about it? Or I have. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And meanwhile, for just to like reiterate to our listeners, you, you're you towing Julia in a little bike buggy on most of these rides, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we have this super awesome uh, trailer mm-hmm. that can be attached with uh, an adapter and if uh, 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 the listeners are curious about the solution I have saved every every bit of information and my highlights in my profile on social media so everything can be found there how how we do it with the gear um, yeah yeah where I was to find you, it. gearing would you have to adjust that so you get that going Mm -hmm. how much do you think you were towing weight wise with like the buggy and and julia in there yeah it's about 25 kilos wow yeah that's great i mean (laughs) you're going and you're also going up in altitude and yeah yeah. she we started this when she was six months on on gran canaria Mm -hmm. uh, and we start slow and uh, my best tip is to start when your when your child can sit properly and and yeah. you have uh, a solid neck and mm-hmm. uh, uh, back uh, muscles to support yeah uh, and like start slow start short mm-hmm. to make sure the child is comfortable and make this fun for the mm-hmm. child and then so far julia has you know she has accepted this uh we take breaks for lunch for play for diaper Mm -hmm. to make sure like she is in a good mood Mm -hmm. and she will have she will remember this as a nice experience and she will she will not refuse to do it again but yeah to make make sure this is a good something for the child yeah I think um, well this is Julia is so far our only child. We have only tried this one. So I'm not sure. <laughs> it, I, I'm sure every child is different, but it has worked for us so far. And she's super, she's uh, always happy. Uh, awesome. If she's not sleeping, she's uh, playing or mm-hmm. just talking to herself, uh, looking out the window. <sighs> That's great. 
I mean, she's definitely seen, I'm seeing a, a lot of stuff, I'm sure. Um, yeah. A lot of entertainment out there. That's great. And I mean, do you and Marcus ever switch off with the buggy or does it, is it always behind yeah. your bike? Oh yeah. No, no, we switch. So I think it's about uh, like 80, 20% and 20 uh, for me, like mostly Marcus, yeah. most days Marcus has it wow. for obvious reason. He is a stronger bike rider. So it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, but sometimes I uh, sometimes it's fun to switch, and also, mm -hmm. uh, so we are both. Uh, you could say we we consider ourselves as serious amateur cyclists, not not racing cyclists anymore. Right. But we'd love to go for a KOM hunt on a segment hunt on Strava. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just fun, yeah, to switch, and you can make sure if you want to do an effort on a climb or, or intervals, or it's nice to be without the trailer sometimes. Right. right. Yeah. Is there a way to add that on Strava when, if you take a KOM <laughs> when towing a buggy, I mean, that would be yeah. an impressive thing to add. It to would the list. be, be a disclaimer. This is uh, the watts per kilo is not uh, right. accurate. You know? <laughs> exactly. But, um, but, but if you think about it, it's just, it's almost like riding uh, normally because the trailer is so stable and so mm. flexible. If you look on your power meter, you can do whatever you want. If you have mm -hmm. enough gearing on your bike, mm -hmm. you can do intervals. You can do, you can go up a climb. Mm -hmm. It's just at a slow pace. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. So with kind of these days out there, like you're saying, stopping for lunch, what was your guys's kind of game plan around fueling, snacking, hydration when you're out there, you, you pack in snacks, you have sports mm -hmm. foods. What's your kind of go-to while you're out there? Like my mindset is always, if you have a route plan, this will take two hours. It mm -hmm. will take three hours, always double it because things happen. You stop, you take photos, yeah. something happens with the kid, always double whatever so if you have one snickers you should double it if you have one sandwich you should double it <laughs> make sure both for your child and for yourself right. you never know what's gonna happen because even if it's not far in distance it can take the whole day mm -hmm. doing things depending on uh, like the weather conditions or mm -hmm. the the baby situation or like be prepared it's it's much better with this trailer because you can load it fully. Yes, that is mm -hmm. handy to have. So you can put a bunch of snacks in there, I would imagine, and yeah. spare diapers um, and all the things. And we also have this. This comes with a trailer, by the way, if you buy this. They have this thick plastic cover in case oh. of rain. You put this on. It's completely dry nice. and it stays super warm. So one time we got in this huge blizzard of or almost blizzard uh we put this on and we got home super scared she oh what's happened to julia oh julia are you okay we open this she's just uh laughing she's super oh. warm super comfortable <laughs> okay this is good at least it works in, yeah. in harsh weather um, that's great uh, and um just uh, to describe our attitude as parents it it's laissez faire. This is you say an expression. It's like go with the flow. We do do not read any manuals or check things in detail before. Life is not a machine or computer. Mm -hmm. Things happen that you are not. Even if you plan something in detail, it never works out anyway. <laughs> so just go along with and and be open to whatever. Mm -hmm. and, at a certain point, maybe you find that manual or how-to book on the way and you find out that you know the important things already. Yeah. And you find them out yourself, uh, what's best for your child and what you are comfortable to do. Sometimes people ask us, like, this is super dangerous to go on the descent, mm. blah, blah, you know, but... Uh, we don't go fast on the descent. We right. go super slow. We... Uh, I wouldn't, uh, we don't take any type of uh, risk that is, that we consider dangerous, but mm -hmm. if you are not an experienced bike rider, 
and, and this is uncomfortable, you should take it slow steps and not go up a mountain the first thing you do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's wise advice. I think it is your comfort level on the bike and your experience level on the bike is a big factor in that. Mm-hmm. Like you're saying, if yeah. someone's brand new to this and they haven't practiced towing a buggy with their kid in and on a flat, flat road, and then they try and go down a windy steep thing that, I mean, they right. got to practice. But then, then you have to check your equipment regularly. Mm-hmm. Like, um, disc brake is a must. I, yeah. I, I don't think it's good to do this with a, a rim brake, for instance, mm-hmm. like changing the brake pads, checking the wheels on the trailer itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know sometimes they have problems with this, like spooks falling off. Mm-hmm. If you check them regularly and tighten them, make sure the wheel is tightened accordingly. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is also good to yeah check check every other day. That's a great point. Yeah, I, you don't hear a lot of, about a lot of people checking their spokes often. I don't mm-hmm. think enough. Um, so that is a great point. So to to be mindful of your time here, um, what was your favorite place to visit and ride at of your trip so far? Uh, in general, I say the Dolomites. Um, yeah. And also it's Italy, great food. Mm. And also not too, it's not too expensive mm-hmm. to, to go out and get a coffee. It's like uh, two, two, two and a half dollars or euros. Yeah. In wow. Switzerland, for in, I love Switzerland, for instance, mm-hmm. but the prices are on a different level. To go out and get a coffee is five dollars for one small really? coffee. Interesting. And it's not and it's not the American big coffee. It's like the super small Europe coffee for five dollars. Oh man, goodness. So then you need to be super conscious about your budget. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. That's good to know. Interesting. Um, so let's see, we should go over your two truths and lie. We'll circle back to that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so we did have here that you stole the QM on the longest segment on, I'm going to say it totally wrong, but cold de pitons. Did mm-hmm, I say that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. From <laughs> legend Emma Pooley. Um, during your labor, you had your Garmin watch on and it sent you messages that were um, not maybe not super helpful, but it, your body is in a more stressed than normal state. Try relaxing exercise. And then you and Marcus have been a couple for nine years and married one, but it still says Marcus is single on Facebook. Um, I said number three was the lie. Which <laughs> one was the lie? Which one was the lie? Uh, you are uh, correct yes oh yay Woo-hoo. <laughs> so when did so was, what was the lie was about almost uh, almost true because I think it was about like three years ago mm. uh, I, I don't use Facebook that often only like the, the messenger mm-hmm. uh, um, thing and not mm-hmm. I never write a status or check Facebook in general, but I did this uh, and happened to go into Marcus's profile and, and I see, ah, oh, it says you're single. Like what? It's it. <laughs> and and we, we laughed about this and we, and just for fun, he kept it this way for a while, but then, <laughs> and, but then, but then uh, uh, I think we found out that you could just hide your, relationship status because oh, yeah. if you changes, I think all of your friends will see now Marcus is uh, right. uh, married to Linda whatever <laughs> yeah uh, but then I, I think yeah I think now it's just uh uh like hidden mm-hmm. on the profile there you go um, that's funny yeah <laughs> and um tell us about the labor situation Did, so was it detecting like an activity or like saying yeah that you- yeah yeah, the heart rate was so, up. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah, the heart rate was up. Maybe the uh, it can also measure like the frequency of your breathing. I think mm-hmm. uh, it was something, and it sent me messages on this watch like, uh, "You should relax." Uh, oh my goodness! You you are in a stressful situation. Like just yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you did you apply any of that? Were you able to do any bre- like breathing techniques while in labor? Did the watch cue well, any of that up or? Not really. No. I was, uh, 
I think um, uh, I got this um, uh, like halfway through. I I got this uh, epidural um, mm -hmm. at, in the in the back, mm -hmm. uh, which really helped me a lot. Yeah. So uh, I think if that didn't had worked so good I'm not sure what will happen because <laughs> it was you know it's a very special situation but uh, yeah um, wow that's it was a, good personnel reason. around me <laughs> yeah that's important that's important yeah. and mm -hmm. um let's see just a couple like other final questions I was curious if you tracked mm -hmm. during your trip did you track at all the total distance you guys rode like over mm -hmm. you did so we have done so far uh, 6,000 kilometers. Wow. Um, 100,000 meters of elevation. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's amazing. That's impressive. Yeah. Incredible. And towing a buggy. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's great. That is so wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is, this is such a, a fun um, episode. So just goodness, it's, it's fun to take the bike and use it in ways that are, take you to fun places and let you do things that you enjoy without like trying to hammer things out and, and less stress. I think this is a great one for the listeners to get some, some travel ideas from, or get some inspiration from. Um, I think this is wonderful. So where can our listeners find you check out your travel pictures on Instagram um cycling gear what's what's your Instagram handle for our listeners so my profile name is just my name Linda Jacobson and the number one and that's Jacobson with two s's that's the Swedish spelling uh that's my main channel for everything um and uh, I also have a link to Strava. If you need any routes around Europe, you can just basically scroll back to anything I have done this year. You will find pretty amazing routes. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. It is always helpful to get ideas on routes from, from other people. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Linda. This was a really fun episode. Mm -hmm. um, definitely appreciate your time. I'm sure it's like a totally different. I mean, what time is it for you? <laughs> It's nine in the evening. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you probably got to go to bed, but um, mm -hmm. well, thank you so much again for joining us. This has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, super fun. Uh, I hope uh, people find this uh, fun to listen to and maybe um, something, well, something different in your, in your feed as well. Yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs>